Great morning. Thank you so much for joining us this month for our webinar series. My name is Michelle Mott and today's topic must be a, a popular one because we've had such a great turnout of attendees. We're going to talk about staying positive in the negative world. And just to make sure that all of you that are joining us for the first time are comfortable with the technology, uh, we encourage you to jot down our office number 515-221-2688. And if you're having any technical troubles, Dana is standing by and can assist you. <clears throat> uh, because of the fact that this is a fairly new platform for all of us actually to be familiar with, uh, we want to give you a couple of tips. First of all, at the top, uh, you'll see that there's some viewing options. So you can look at the entire screen uh, or show what, however much you'd like to watch on your computer. Uh, we're also going to try to make this interactive by using the chat feature at the bottom of the screen to bring up the chat box and then we'd like you to change the to uh, in the click down to all panelists and attendees type in your message and then hit enter uh, as i just did and dana had done beforehand so that we can read your questions or your responses and then at the bottom, hopefully you've adjusted the sound using the sounds of Jimmy Buffett uh, to make sure that you can hear adequately. If not, you can call in uh, with your phone using the num or the yeah, phone number on the email sent out previously. So why do we do these webinar series? Uh, we feel that it's a great way for us to dose out some monthly motivation and expose you to one of our inspiring programs and products. This particular month, we're gonna be featuring some contents out of my best-selling book, Attitude, The Choice is Yours. So we tried something new for the first time of giving you some free work. So if you opted to ahead of time, if not, you can do it afterwards. There was a self-image inventory for you to assess your self-esteem and your thoughts about life or others around you in general. Then I'm gonna share with you uh, five attitude adjustment techniques and five maintenance strategies, all of which to stay positive in a negative world. The materials we're gonna to refer to include that pre-work uh, called the self-image inventory, and the second is the staying positive in a negative world handout. Afterwards, when you fill out the evaluation, uh, we'll be sending you a follow-up with the recording uh, of this webinar along with some links that you want to pay attention to, and the special invitation to getting certified in a powerful, popular program called Attitudes in the Workplace. Like always, we're going to ask you to fill out, when you close out of the Zoom technology, uh, you'll be asked to fill out a couple of questions that helps us to get feedback on improving your learning experience as well as topics for future webinars. Speaking of webinars, at the end of your handout, uh, you'll see the schedule for the rest of 2019, listing the topics, and we're excited the fact that we're gonna have three uh, guest speakers uh, joining us. Uh, we do these 30 minutes at the top of the hour at 9, 10, and 11 Central Standard Time. Uh, you now can go out and register for next month's webinar from our website, inspiringsolutions.com. We encourage you to forward on the invitation to others, coworkers, family, or friends, and don't watch alone. I think that's uh, Dateline's tagline. Uh, but we encourage you, and we've learned that many of you uh, set this up in training rooms, boardrooms, so that you can make it a kind of a fun team exercise. Would you agree that more and more employers today are hiring and firing employees not on the basis of their aptitude, but their attitude? which means I'm not impressed with the number of years or the volume of your education or experience, but what I am impressed with is your can-do attitude or your willingness to deliver good customer service. What does that say to you? On the chat box, what I'd like you to do is, again, uh, change it to all panelists and employees, and then I'd like you to type in what do you read on the screen. And this exercise is interesting because what I find is, first and foremost, people read, opportunity is nowhere. 
That's because we have been programmed to think, speak, and act negatively. Now, obviously, if you either read out what uh, I said Jennifer had wrote, uh, is that opportunity is now here. Two ways of looking at the exact same thing, which means you can see life as full of problems, or you can see po problems actually as disguised, uh, po disguised uh, opportunities. I'm sorry, I just realized it's Jane Pennington, not Jennifer. So thank you for ch chiming in. Uh, what this exercise points out to us is oftentimes Life is 10% of what happens to us and 90% of how we react to it. And that's one of the most important choices you can actually make. And that's what we're gonna help you with today. So what is an attitude? In my book, I try to make it real simple. You have certain thoughts about everything in life, yourself, your job, people that you work with, people that you live with or communicate with. And it's those thoughts that lead you to action. In, off, in other words, you will oftentimes say or do based on what you think about. And you've heard the computer axiom, garbage in, garbage out. So how can you get the best results in life? Well, I, I stay a lot when I travel in the Hampton Inns. And this happened to be in the sliding bathroom door uh, earlier this week. And so I took a picture of it and I love it. It's a great day to be great, is it not? It doesn't matter what the weather's doing. We're getting some heavy rains this morning uh, and actually overnight. Uh, whether you've got four hours of sleep or four, eight hours of sleep, uh, it all is up to you of what you get out of each day. Now, as I mentioned, we tried something new uh, to give you some pre-work. So you kind of set the stage for our webinar. And that is a self-image inventory. It's actually something that's contained in my book. And I'm curious, if you did actually take the time to do so, type in the chat box what your reaction to. Now, was it spot on? Was it uh, something that you really resonated well with? And for those of you who have not, that's okay. We'll encourage you to do it afterwards. But it's not a test. It's not something that you can pass or fail. It's mainly to give you an awareness of how you think about yourself, uh, others, life in general. And then when you score it, you have to do a little bit of uh, math 101, remembering that when you multiply by a positive number, you get a positive score. If it's zero, zero is times any number is zero. And then multiplying by a negative number would be a number, a negative number. And then the total score uh, gives you some interpretation of how, uh, how rejected or inadequate you might feel. If you have a negative self-image or acceptable, positive, or even an inflated self-image. So I encourage you to uh, take some time to do that if you've not done so, as well as you can do that as you um, complete the exercises in the book, Attitude the Choice is Yours. So let's now uh, explore the fact that life is full of choices. You choose where you live, whether you live in town or out of town. Uh, whether you, you live in a house, whether you live in an apartment, you choose what you do with your career, whether you're a banker, nurse, doctor, lawyer. In fact, in our free time, we choose what we do, uh, whether it's golfing, gardening, and you might even been allowed to hold this gadget once or twice in your hand. I'm referring to the remote control to your television set. What's the first button we look for? The power. And isn't it true whoever has a remote? has the power. Secondly, what happens when we get to a show or channel we don't want to watch? Well, we change it. Well, likewise, each and every day of your life, you turn on the power of energy when you wake up, and you can choose to have a great day and get the most out of it, or you can choose to have a bad day and try to ruin it for everyone else. That choice is yours. And oftentimes when I do training or workshops or keynotes or conferences, I will oftentimes give out a yellow band. And I'm curious if anybody here on the call has ever been given one of those attitude control bands. If so, type yes. And what we do is ask you to wear it for at least seven days. And then snap yourself when you catch yourself doing what we call stinking thinking to prevent yourself from saying something that might hurt the feelings of other people. And then it's also an interactive gadget. By that I mean if you happen to hear one of your coworkers whining and complaining, you get to snap them back in shape. So oftentimes it's, it's a pretty interactive, engaging experience. And if you want, go out and you can order some on our website, inspiringsolutions.com. 
Well, let's now look at the worksheet to help you channel the power within your life. The first tune-up technique I write about is called listen to your self-talk. By that I mean I want you to start being aware of your choice of words, tone of voice, and body language. And would people describe you as being positive, negative, or neutral? That choice is yours. The second part of this technique is about an engine or a train. How many of you remember the story about the little engine that could? And uh, the storyline, in case it's been a while, is about this little train who's trying to tr deliver train or toys over the mountain. And she kept chanting over and over to herself, I think I can, I think I can. And if you know the story, she eventually did. And the reason that's important is if you think you can, with some hard work and determination, you will. Whether it's complete a project, meet a deadline, improve a relationship. But if you think you can't, you won't because you've already given up on yourself or the situation. So learn to listen to your self-talk. The second tune-up technique is about happiness. How many of you want to be happy? There's even a song, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Well, unfortunately, I find far too many people waiting for something to bring them happiness. And studies have sh shown that it's highly unlikely that someday your doorbell will ring, and there in front of you is happiness along with Publishers Clearinghouse. You've got to learn to pursue happiness on your court. So what I'd like you to do, on the chat in the chat box is I'd like for you each to write in something that brings you happiness today. It could be someone in your life, personal or professional. It could be something, or it could just be a general thought that you have in general. All right, thank you, Marissa. Absolutely. Your children, your grandchildren, your family in general who loves you and adores you, maybe though you don't see them very often. You know, the weather has been, uh, yeah, there she is, uh, sunshine. You know, we've been lacking some sunshine and warm weather, uh, but definitely it does factor in. So what happens when you have days like we're having now with the sunshine? Um, you need to learn to not live in the good old days, but to learn to pursue happiness on your own. Uh, the next technique is going to help you deal with change. Uh, we're brought in to work with organizations that oftentimes are experiencing change because it definitely puts a damper on the culture. Well, I, the tune-up technique is called seek comfort with change. Doesn't it sound like an oxymoron? Putting two words in the same sentence that just don't go together, kind of like pretty ugly or jumbo shrimp. My favorite is Microsoft Works. Because how do we feel when we encounter change? Well, not very comfortable because we are creatures of habit. How many of you get up basically the same time every day? You go through the same routine, might even drive to and from work the same way and get irritated if someone's parking in your designated parking spot. But we need to learn that change is happening at a more rapid rate in our world than ever before. And if we do not accept it, embrace it, even initiate it, it could kill us. And I mean that both professionally as an organization, as well as personally. For instance, how many of you remember Charles Schultz? He brought us peanuts, Snoopy in the game. And he was about to embark on one of life's significant changes, retirement. And when asked what he was going to do during retirement, he said, you know what, I don't know. My whole life, I was so dedicated to my career, and many of you might know people like that. Well, unfortunately, the same week that his last issue came out, died. So we need to learn to seek comfort with change, or it could kill us. The fourth tune-up technique is going to help you deal with people. There's days where you can't live, and in reality, you really can't live without people. You need to have a value or appreciation on relationships, whether it be your coworkers, your family members, your friends, even your bosses. So the idea is to learn to put this in place by practicing the golden rule. That is, treat others as you'd like to be treated. Because I truly believe and have found what goes around comes around. So what I'd like you to do is think about what is a golden rule that you would like to practice in your workplace or in your family at home. And learn to, to demonstrate those things like please, thank you, I love yous on a regular basis. 
Now, the last way to tune up any kind of stinking thinking is stop shooting on yourself. Now, usually I get these looks like I said something nasty, but I didn't. The whole tune-up technique is about listening to your shoulds and transferring them to to-dos. Because recognize this, you can never should have done anything. You've either done it or you haven't. But what you can do with those should-dos is tune in, and if it's important to you or to someone else or a situation, transfer it to action. For instance, I know there's something that you've been saying to yourself this week, oh man, I really should do this, or I really should do that. But recognize this, you can't ever do anything you've not done, but you can write it down and take action. So here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like for you to type in the chat box something that you should do and will do between now and Sunday. It could be something that you need to do at work before you leave for the weekend. Maybe it's something that you need to do over the weekend to prepare for an upcoming party or celebration. Something that I should do and will do this afternoon is I need to go out and buy a couple cards. Uh, two birthday cards because we're getting together with some friends tonight and celebrating. And then the other is a graduation uh, that I have a party to go to on Sunday. But type in the chat box something that you should do and will do. Okay, thank you, Jane. She's going to clean the house. Awesome. Oh, a couple people needing to do some house cleaning. Oh, gosh. You know, and, and take it a little at a time. Maybe you do just one, one room at a time. Or maybe you just really do a good job with vacuuming. Or I'm looking at my windows. I really need and will do some window cleaning. Now, before I share with you the maintenance strategies, I want to acknowledge to this group that everyone's entitled to have a, a bad day now and then. And I'm not this Pollyanna going around whistling happy tunes every day. Because I have bad days. In fact, I find the bad days make the good days that much better. But if on those bad or stressful days you can laugh, you can certainly lighten the load. So here's some ways of doing so. Uh, the first uh, maintenance strategy is to start fresh each day. So again, on your handout, fill in the blank. Regardless of how bad yesterday was, computers you crashed, relationships you ruined, you've got one chance at making the most out of today before it becomes yesterday. Now, to put this into practice, tomorrow morning, and I know it's Saturday, so that kind of starts the day off nice anyway, I want you to look at yourself in the mirror and whether or not you're having a bad hair day or not, say out loud as Billy Crystal said it best, darling, you look marvelous. Because on Sunday, that may end up being the nicest thing you hear all day. The second strategy is to clarify and prioritize your life. In the interactive part of my workbook, there are a couple of steps to this exercise. First of all, clarify the roles that are important to you. And jot down on your handout, what roles are important to you in life? Maybe as mother, as father, as sister, as child. Uh, maybe you're a manager, maybe you're a team member. Maybe you're a volunteer at your kid's soccer or a church. Then think about how you would like or hope other people would use to describe you in those roles. You can't take the stuff with you. You can't take the cars, you can't take the houses, the clothes all those things that we oftentimes worry about, the only thing you can leave behind in this world are memories. So I'd like for you to think about how, what words would you like people to describe you as a mother, as a father, as a relative? And I'll give you in my example. Uh, back in 1991, I was going through a very significant time. I had just lost my job. I'd started my own business. I'd gotten married and I couldn't felt as though my life was more out of control. And I did this exercise kind of from a use application from Stephen Covey, but I came out of there with three guiding statements that today still tries to keep my life in check. First and foremost is that I'm a happy and healthy person because I choose to be happy regardless of what's going on around me. And I know, and I've learned that if I don't take care of myself, I can't take of other people. Second, I am a loving, caring, and patient sister, stepmother, stepgrandma, relative, and friend. 
And then the third guides my career, and that is I'm an honest and trustworthy professional. I know sometimes clients hire me to give them what they need to hear, not necessarily what they want to hear, but I will always honor them with the truth. So think about and clarify your life. The third is to enjoy the moment. I'm talking about being present. You know, I always think whenever I have a chance or privilege to connect with a group, whether it's over webinar, whether it's in a face-to-face -face setting, it's life, like all of our lives joining for a moment at an intersection. Because who knows if this group will ever be assembled together again. What a great opportunity. And I really summarize this, this platform with this quote. If you want, feel free to, to uh, catch it on your camera, phone. The past is history. It's over and done with. You can't do anything but learn from it. The future is a mystery. It's for you to yet to create. But today is a gift. That's why we call it the present. And I truly have found and believe that people facing death have the greatest understanding and appreciation for life. You see, back in the 80s, I went through a Dale Carnegie course with a woman named Anita. And during that time together, she was diagnosed with stage four fatal terminal breast cancer. And I remember one time, right before we took a break for the holidays, she got up in front of us and said how excited she was because she was being honored by her family and friends. And knowing her circumstance, it broke us all down into tears. And she came back very confidently. She said to us, do not, do not cry for me. I feel so lucky that I'm going to have a chance to let those people know how much they mean to me. Don't take life for granted. There are no guarantees. So I really took that to heart. And I, I knew I was loved, but for whatever reason, my parents never told us kids that they loved us. And I had a standing routine when my parents were alive that I would check with them over the weekend. So the, for the first time that Sunday night, right before we said our goodbyes, I said the magic words, I love you. And I still can think and my palms get sweaty how emotional that was. But after some time, my dad came on with a little lump in his throat and said, ditto. And from that conversation on, whether it was face to face, or whether it was over the telephone, before we said our goodbyes, it was always preceded with I love yous. Don't think that you're going to have more time or a better time to let people know how you truly appreciate them. So enjoy the moment. Now on a lighter note, learn how to express don't suppress your feelings, which means if you're happy and you know, clap your hands. So sing, dance like Ellen does, or like my grandfather used to do, whistle. The reason that this is important is you can't have a bad attitude when you're whistling, and I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to whistle a very popular tune. What I want you to do wherever you are is to join me. If your whistler won't work, I want you to click your fingers, clap your hands, because I'm going to prove the point. So here it goes. Whistle while you work, whistle while you go through life, because not as only is it going to help you feel good, people are going to wonder what you're up to. And then the last way to maintain a positive attitude in the negative world is to surround yourself with positive influences, whether it be at work, in your office, or in your home. And I list here the five senses. And in the book, I give several inexpensive ways of doing so. For instance, think about what you like to see. You know, you can't beat the sunshine. So get those windows washed and let the sunshine in. In fact, speaking of windows, this picture is actually of Sarah, our last year's intern, who bought and hung a mural in our office because we don't have an actual window. And it's a window to the beach because Dan and I both love the beach. Uh, think about what you like to hear. Maybe it's birds chirp chirping, children laughing. Uh, think about what you like to smell. Uh, flowers, the lilacs are in full bloom here in, in Des Moines. Um, think about what you like to taste or drink, uh, chocolate, fresh cut uh, bread, or maybe it's your favorite beverage. And then finally, think about what you like to feel. 
whether it's that cat or dog that meets you or greets you every night when you come home with that unconditional love. Uh, on a professional note, it's a nice handshake. Or to those that you care about, give them a hug. You need three hugs a day and you'll find that it lowers your blood pressure. But I guarantee you, if you exchange it, you will receive one right back. And I encourage you, if you're watching uh, with others, before you go back to your offices, uh, share some love. Now, in closing, what I wanna do is extend a couple of opportunities uh, for you. First, to get trained to conduct this class uh, in your workplace. We just can't uh, help enough people to stay positive in a negative world. So we'd love your help. Um, there, this, in this Train the Trainer called Attitudes in the Workplace, you'll get all the resources to teach uh, not only this course, but another one called Don't Let the Bad App Apples Drive You Bananas. Uh, you'll be given uh, facilitation materials, uh, videos that you can use, PowerPoints to show. There's an attitude e-binder that you can use uh, to not only uh, enhance your training, but meetings, huddles. Uh, there's PowerPoints, reproducible handouts, basically $995 worth of materials. And we're going to give you $100 off because you joined us today. Uh, it's a two-part series. So there's two webinars. The first is on July 29th from 1 to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And then part two is August, August 5th. And if you'd like more information, please reach out to us. Dana's also going to include some information. Uh, during the on the follow-up after this webinar. We also will encourage you to mark your calendars uh, for next month on June 21st. We're going to talk about teams that care. Then for our summer series, we're going to bring some guest speakers in July to talk about the data-driven future of leading organizations. In August 16th, we're going to talk about the importance of moving from we, me to we. And finally, uh, please take a few minutes after you close out of the webinar to answer our survey questions that gives us feedback to improve the experience as well as suggestions for future topics. Uh, Dana and I thank you for making uh, this webinar series a priority and we'll challenge you to make it a great day and weekend for yourself and others. Thank you and look forward to joining us in the future.